From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reisinger. Both medicinal and recreational marijuana are now legal in Montana, but Billings voters could decide whether it can be sold here inside city limits. Local marijuana policy was one of the major topics at tonight's Billings City Council meeting as the council heard about the options it has to regulate the distribution, sale, taxation and type of marijuana businesses that operate inside city limits. That meeting tonight was the council's first back in person in the traditional city hall chambers since March of 2020. Q2's Mitch Leggy joins us now with a recap. The question of whether to allow seven different types of marijuana businesses inside the Billings city limits could be up to the voters in an election on November 2nd. This after the city council directed staff on Tuesday night to look into the question of holding that election. Assistant city attorney Karen Tracy outlined the rights that the city has to marijuana implementation under House Bill 701, passed by the state legislature and signed into law by Governor Greg Gianforte on May 18th this year. The law carves out seven types of marijuana business categories cultivation, manufacturer, medical marijuana dispensaries, adult use or recreational dispensaries, combined use licenses, testing laboratories, and transport facilities. If the city council takes no action, the seven business types will be allowed to operate inside the city limits starting January 1st, 2021. Tracy said the council can regulate those seven businesses if it chooses to do so, or it could go back to the voters who would have the final say on individually allowing or prohibiting any number of those seven business types within the city. With a 7-3 vote, the council directed staff to start researching dates and language to have the option to have that question before voters on November 2nd. That's the same date when Billings voters will also decide on a $7 million public safety levy for the Billings Police and Fire Departments. The council also directed city staff to form a committee to further discuss and work through the complex task of implementing legalized cannabis in the city of Billings. Ultimately, our goal is to be back here late summer or fall with regulations for first reading, second reading, 30-day effective date so that everything can be squarely in place before January when, uh, when the laws all become effective. So part of my message here is we don't have to, the goal, the, the idea wasn't we're gonna walk out of here tonight with all the answers. This will be, this is the first of at least a couple of work session dialogues and then getting into the meat of what's a draft ordinance literally look like. So. If the council wants to hold that marijuana election, they're on a tight timeline to do it. They have just 18 days until July 26th to have the first reading of the ballot language completed. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. Well, the council also voiced its intentions to notify the county commissioners of the group's support for the 3% option tax that would be placed on marijuana products and be given back to local government. The local option tax must be approved by the county voters at large and put on the ballot by the county commissioners. There is still no sign tonight of a woman who went missing while hiking the rugged Beartooth Mountains near Red Lodge. 23-year-old Tatum Morrell was by herself trying to climb some of the highest peaks in that area. Q2's Brandon Warren has more on the search. A 23-year-old female solo hiker went missing near Red Lodge, and now search and rescue crews are racing against the clock to try and locate her. We are actively searching for 23-year-old uh, Tatum Morrell, who is an engineering student, a graduate engineering student uh, at MSU. She's an active uh, outdoors person, an active hider, hiker, and was attempting to climb uh, five 12,000 foot peaks in the Beartooth uh, by herself over the 4th of July weekend. The search began last night, and after locating and investigating her campsite, officials believe Morrell left her camp the morning of July 2nd and has not returned since. Helicopters, ground crews and infrared technology have been used in the search to no avail. Our main focus going forward is going to be to have uh, people on the ground searching in this rugged terrain. Uh, we have in contact with Gallatin Search and Rescue. They're going to hopefully be sending uh, some crews over to assist us uh, with Alpine, Alpine Search. Uh, and we're bringing in additional helicopter resources to continue uh, searching. The search radius is 15 square miles focused in the area of the West Fork Trail where Morrell went missing. The search crew is currently at 25 people. Currently the area that we're searching is very rugged and we are not utilizing any kind of citizen searches at, at, at this time. 
uh, you know, this is an area where uh, it really is only appropriate for folks who are highly skilled at uh, mountain travel. Search and Rescue attempted to find Morel's location by pinging the GPS on her phone and in reach device, but both were unresponsive. In Red Lodge, Brandon Warren, MTN News. Well, Chief Kuntz told me tonight they'll have three helicopters in the air and close to three dozen searchers on the ground beginning early tomorrow morning. Officials are asking anyone who may have seen morale after the night of July 1st to call the Carbon County Sheriff's Office. An arrest and more details after a recent shootout in downtown Billings that left a 22-year-old man dead and police say that crime was all captured on camera. 18-year-old Bri Jen Fisher was arrested today and charged with deliberate homicide in the death, uh, death of Thaddeus Merritt of Chicago. It all played out just before midnight on June 24th in the downtown parking lot off North 27th between Jake's and the Burger Dive. Court documents state surveillance video from a camera on a nearby building shows Fisher and a group of people walking toward another group, including Merritt. The video shows Fisher pulling out a gun and shooting Merritt multiple times at point blank range. After Merritt fell, Fisher allegedly fired two more shots. Merritt then fired back from the ground, hitting Fisher in the legs and ankle. Merritt later died at the hospital. Local law enforcement is also coming off a very busy but positive holiday weekend. In fact, 4th of July calls are down from a year ago. Police responded to 425 calls as compared to just over 450 last year. As to be expected on America's birthday, the majority of those calls involve fireworks complaints. Officers responded to 161 total fireworks complaints, a slight increase over the 2020 number. Those calls turned into six citations. Perhaps the most positive stat of the night, there were zero DUI arrests. Well, a small earthquake hit southeastern Montana this morning. That earthquake near Melstone, about 60 miles from Billings, was reported at 544 a.m. with a magnitude of 4.1. It occurred at a depth, a depth of 6.2 miles. There were no reports of any damage. Now turning to Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh, that was this morning. Tonight it was the severe storms that rolled through, causing some hail and other problems. That's right, and we're continuing to see a little bit of activity. Things have really quieted down quite a bit. Now here's where that uh, earthquake happened near Melstone first thing in the day, and then watch as we start getting into the evening, pretty much all around that region, first around Shepherd, Huntley, up towards Levina during the afternoon and early evening hours, and then continue to move on a line south from Harden down towards Lame Deer by later in the evening. Also got uh, a heads up on a possible tornado around Hayes. That happened during the evening hours. They'll go out and do a, a ground surveillance of that tomorrow to see There's some large hail. And then a storm that was moving through the Sand Springs area just outside of Jordan continued to move through. Look down into the lower left hand portion of your screen. There's Melstone. They're just not catching a break today. Back with a look at the forecast in a few minutes. In Florida, a hurricane watch is now in effect for parts of the Gulf Coast as Tropical Storm Elsa moves closer to landfall. That storm has already produced intense rain and strong winds near Key West today. Those winds are only expected to strengthen once Elsa comes ashore tomorrow morning. Forecasters are also warning of the potential for isolated tornadoes. Well, the loud cracks and booms of fireworks often send our furry friends running. As Q2 Shaquille Cozart reports, unfortunately, it's a common trend. Well, every year in Billings and across the nation, many pet owners on the 4th of July lose their furry friends. And the days after the 4th of July is when shelters like the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter become increasingly busy trying to match their pets with their owners. But this year was no different. One Billings family, however, was reunited with their furry friend yesterday after 24 hours of not knowing what happened. I went to take a shower, but I let the dog out first. And when I got done with the shower, I went to look for him. He was gone. And he's like my best friend. And since he left, I can barely sleep. I really haven't gotten anything done. The Payne family said they posted about S.H.I.E.L.D. on several Facebook pages. They posted lost dog signs around the area where S.H.I.E.L.D. was last seen. And they also utilized the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter's report section on their website. We just want somebody to see the sign, um, let us know that they either have our dog or have seen him. We just want him back. According to the Yellowstone Valley Animal Shelter, losing a pet on the 4th of July is not specific to the Payne family. On a normal day, the shelter will bring in about four to five lost or stray animals, but after the fourth. We had 14 animals come in just on the fifth alone. 
Uh, I think uh, 12 of those were dogs and two were, two were cats. Smith says that as of July 6, all of those lost pets have since been reunited with their owner, most with the help of microchips and ID tags that many shelters strongly encourage people to get when adopting a new pet. More good news is that the Payne family was also recently reunited with Shield. The person ended up calling me saying their kids had him. I asked for pictures because they just wanted to meet up but I didn't want to meet up if it was the wrong dog, so they sent me pictures. Looked like him, I got their address, we went down there. They had their kids bring the dog up from the basement and well, it was him. And I kind of went into shock, almost, and I didn't know what was real. I was just so happy. Finally got sleep. Reporting in Billings, I'm Shaquille Cozart with MTN News. I'm glad that story had a happy ending. Well, the life of Hall of Fame athletic director Bruce Parker was celebrated today. Parker passed away on Friday after complications from diabetes and a kidney transplant. He was 64, and as Scott Breen shows us, beloved in all corners of the Treasure State. Well, to no one's surprise, they actually build it as a game day atmosphere. More of a countdown to kickoff, it was called, here at Herb Clint Field on the campus of Rocky Mountain College. And on the very turf, Bruce Parker himself was instrumental in achieving for the school. In a chorus of his favorite song, Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline, this was the scene of his memorial service this morning, an outdoor setting grand enough to reflect Parker's outsized personality. Roughly a thousand friends and family members, coaches and colleagues from all Montana highways and back roads turned out in a telling testament to how he was both revered and respected. Rocky men's basketball coach Billy Drykosen opened with a bottle of Mountain Dew, Parker's go-to beverage, celebrating a toast. Shortly after, Parker was inducted to Rocky's Clara Clint Athletic Hall of Fame, seemingly one of the few he wasn't already a member. Bears AD Jeff Malby presenting to Parker's wife Lisa and sons Brett and Ryan. Highest honor that we bestow upon. Longtime friend and school district two superintendent Greg Upham, like many others, spoke of how Lisa was the glue in her husband's daily routine throughout their decades together. But I'm going to pick an MVP today, and it's not going to be Bruce. It's going to be Mrs. Parker. Montana State's longtime radio voice, Dean Alexander, recalled the road trip when Bruce was an assistant AD for the Bobcats. The trip was to Reno. Parker wanted to make sure everybody on staff knew about the $5 steak deal at a local restaurant. When they all arrived, everybody ordered steak, except Parker, who went with chicken cordon bleu. Carroll College head football coach Mike Van Deest enjoyed a run of six national championships with Parker by his side as AD. You walk in his office, you know, if we got there and Lisa wasn't around, he'd open up the drawers and there'd be Hershey bars up in the corner. <laughs> you know, he'd make Jonesy go for a Taco Bell run in the afternoon. He and Lisa were always there. Whether it was a Saints athletic auction, uh, whether it was a Christmas party for the coaches, whether they were getting ready to get charters to the national championship game, Bruce knew what to do and it was just rolling up your sleeves and working hard. That was his M.O. and a big reason he was named Frontier Conference Athletic Director of the Year nine times. And naturally, after Bruce Parker's service, a tailgate party over here in the East parking lot fit for college game day itself. And why not serve Mountain Dew and tacos, two of his all-time favorite menu items. At Herb Clint Field, Rocky Mountain College, Scott Breen, MTN Sports. And Scott tells us that Parker held dear allegiances to Rocky, Carroll, and Montana State, all schools he worked for, as well as his alma mater at the former Eastern Montana College. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. From water to wildfires, the drought has caused many concerns, but now it will likely co be costing you in the wallet. We'll explain when we come back. Then a little later in sports, PGA and NFL stars collide on a Montana golf course. We'll have highlights from that match coming up in just a bit.